This video is intended for training purposes. Healthcare facilities should develop procedures based on available equipment and staff. It is imperative that all protocols be tested and practiced while wearing personal protective equipment to ensure applicability and team readiness. Portable Isolation Unit Transfer of patient from bed to PIU and transfer of patient from PIU to bed. In this video, we identify the special considerations needed for transferring a patient infected with Ebola or other special pathogen from the bed to a portable isolation unit and from a portable isolation unit to the bed. When transferring or receiving a patient infected with Ebola or other special pathogen in a portable isolation unit, health care workers must work carefully to ensure that they and the patient remain safe throughout the procedure. Several models of portable isolation units are available. In this video, we discuss concepts applicable to most PIUs. When properly constructed, the portable isolation unit creates a negative pressure environment that prevents contaminated air from escaping, while high-efficiency particulate air filters, or HEPA filters, provide air filtration for patient transfers. Always refer to the manufacturer's instructions for construction and use of the portable isolation unit. The patient transport process is a systematic and orderly operation that should be tested and practiced using the available equipment at your facility. Throughout the procedure, healthcare workers will be wearing PPE that may be uncomfortable and restrictive. This may result in decreased dexterity and tactile sensation. For this reason, Healthcare workers are urged to work cautiously and be mindful of their limitations. Prior training with the PIU while wearing PPE is essential. This will allow healthcare workers to experience firsthand the challenges they will encounter during a live procedure. Communication with team members is an example of one such challenge. During a procedure, PPE can be noisy and muffle sounds, making communication difficult. Healthcare workers will need to speak in a loud, clear tone and be prepared to ask co-workers to repeat themselves to verify understanding. Necessary equipment for the portable isolation unit procedure includes a wheeled stretcher or gurney, a slide board or backboard, as indicated by PIU instructions and the protocols of the transferring and receiving institutions, a portable isolation unit complete with all required equipment and components, EPA-approved disinfectant wipes, absorbent pads, and an emesis bag. It is important to plan ahead and be prepared for any anticipated equipment needs. Depending on the patient's condition, additional equipment may be necessary, such as a resuscitation bag and mask, portable suction, dressing packs, and telemetry monitoring. Prior to the patient transfer procedure, review institutional protocol with all care team members and discuss the plan of action. The protocol should determine the number of care team members required for the procedure. At minimum, three care team members are recommended for the PIU procedure, two to perform the patient transfer, and a third to monitor the patient. Consideration may also be given to using two teams, one team to transfer the patient into the PIU and a second team that will remain clean and transport the patient through the clean zones. During the procedure, the patient may experience anxiety or fear. Care team members should provide reassurance to the patient and explain the purpose of the portable isolation unit as needed. Additional considerations for anxiety can be given to pre-medication or distraction techniques. Patients can be given a book or a magazine to read or encouraged to listen to music if they have an appropriate device. If the patient requires clinical monitoring during transportation, communicate with the transfer team to ensure that electronics and other devices are compatible with the transfer team's equipment. If the patient transfer process is expected to take an extended amount of time, consider the placement of a urinary catheter before placing the patient in the PIU. Transferring a patient into a PIU takes a considerable amount of space. Remove excess equipment from the area to ensure there is ample room for the procedure. Make sure the patient bed is at a comfortable height to prevent the care team from experiencing back strain during the procedure. And as previously mentioned, 
PIU assembly will vary based on the model used and should be completed following the manufacturer's instructions. Secure the PIU to the wheeled stretcher or gurney following the manufacturer's recommendations. Be careful to avoid snagging or tearing PPE when buckling the portable isolation unit's straps. If the PIU has interior straps to restrain the patient, follow your institutional policy and procedures regarding the need for a restraint order. Perform hand hygiene after touching the patient bed or any equipment that will be used during the procedure. Some facilities may also require that outer gloves be changed. Depending on the room layout and bed position, it is possible that the patient may need to be transferred from the left or right side of the bed. This may depend on the model of PIU being used, as it may be designed for the patient to transfer into or out of the unit on one side only. Another consideration is the footprint of the wheeled stretcher in the hot zone. If the stretcher is going to be wheeled into the clean zone after the patient is put into it, the floor should be cleaned and disinfected prior to entry. As with any procedure, ensure institutional protocols are followed at all times. For example, conduct a timeout with all care team members just prior to the procedure to validate the approach and process, and ensure all required equipment and supplies are prepared. Transfer the patient to the portable isolation unit. If necessary, use a slide board. After transferring the patient, Remove the slide board from the PIU and place it on the bed for cleaning and decontamination. If the patient is able to transfer on their own, allow them to get into the PIU with assistance. Secure the patient in the portable isolation unit per the manufacturer's instructions. This may involve reassembling the PIU's frame by connecting the unit's ribs and spine. Turn on the blower motor to provide airflow into the unit. Secure the PIU zipper with care to ensure that gloves are not snagged between the zipper and zipper tab, as this has the potential to cause a breach in PPE. Once the portable isolation unit is closed, prepare the PIU for transport by wiping the external surfaces with EPA-approved disinfectant wipes. The PIU should remain closed and not be opened until the unit has reached its destination. If PPE becomes contaminated during the procedure, stop and follow institutional protocol for removing gross contamination from PPE. Contaminated PPE has the potential to spread the pathogen and is risky to remove during the doffing process. If the PIU has integrated gloves and a tear occurs, external exposure can be mitigated by twisting the glove and taping it into its socket to contain the breach. If the PIU is equipped with passageways or snorkels, refer to the manufacturer's documentation for further information. Generally, snorkels are intended to facilitate the passing of small items such as IV and oxygen tubing into the PIU. Do not use snorkels to pass items out of the portable isolation unit during the patient transfer process. Items passed into the PIU should remain inside for the duration of the transport. Like the patient transfer process from bed to PIU, the logistics of the PIU to bed transfer will depend on the layout of the patient room and the design specifics of the PIU. When transferring the patient out of the PIU, always evaluate the potential risks for PPE breach. Healthcare workers should maintain situational awareness and keep their hands visible at all times. Losing sight of hands by placing them underneath the patient could result in the contamination of gloves or gloves being pulled off as hands are retracted. Unzip the PIU. 
Be careful not to snag or tear gloves in the zipper mechanism. Turn off the blower motor. Disconnect all tubing and monitoring equipment. Transfer the patient from the PIU per the manufacturer's instructions. This may involve disassembling the canopy by removing the unit's ribs and spine. Transfer the patient to the bed using a slide board if necessary. If the patient is able to transfer on their own, they may be allowed to do so with assistance. Depending on the duration of the transport process, it may be necessary for the patient to sit on the edge of the stretcher in order to regain equilibrium after lying flat. After the procedure is complete, sure all sharps are accounted for and safely disposed of. All instruments should be placed in a location where they will not contaminate other equipment or surfaces. Clean and disinfect the area per institutional protocol. Additional resources are available at the NETEC and CDC websites. If you have any questions, contact NETEC directly at info at Thank you.